Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs, and today we're going to be going over slots, tabs, and uh, other quick tips for adjusting materials. This gets asked all the time, um, and this is something that you're going to have to learn to do um, on your materials. You're going to want to learn this regardless if you buy materials or if you make your own. That way you can actually adjust them. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the tabs here or the um, the actual edges of like boxes first because this one is the trickiest one in my opinion. Um, it really isn't hard to do. It's just time consuming. Um, it just takes a while because you got to do each one of these little tiny tabs and it takes a while. Um, that's why if you try and contact a seller, they usually don't offer to do like free adjustments for a whole different size material based on your material size versus the material size it's made for because it can take quite a while. It can take anywhere from 15 minutes to a few hours if you're doing this manually and depending on how many slots and tabs there are. Um, luckily with slots they're a lot faster than the actual tabs. Um, let's go ahead and jump into this and I'll show you how to do this here. So right here we have just a standard box. I've got it set perfectly for 1 8 inch material um, or in this case my exact size is 0 0.137 inches um, that's proof grade material use it all the time that's how um, big it is between let me zoom in here between this red line and this very light blue line and if you're wondering yes my lines are really thick right now um, I put it up to three points just so you could see it better on the screen versus a really thin line currently um, so what we can do is we can actually go over here to our rectangle tool. We're going to click once and then make a rectangle. Um, and the width, um, since it's going, since this slot is going up and down, we're going to make the width of this your material size. So let's say, for example, since I've been using a lot of green glass acrylic, that is the quarter inch, we're going to put 0 to point, um, or 0 0.227 in there. That's the exact size of my material. Um, it's usually right about that and it works most of the time with the right kerf settings. And we'll go into kerf here as well. Um, that way you know the actual tightness all in one video here and make it as easy as possible. The height really doesn't matter in this case. This is just giving you the range of how thick your material is, something to be based off of. We're gonna click OK. And right here, um, from left to right, these two nodes here, from here to here, is going to be your thickness of your actual material. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, and we're going to drag it until it, it snaps into place here. Oh, I think I have, yeah, I have snap to grid turned on. You want to make sure you don't have snap to grid turned on, so it'll actually connect like this. And these uh, two paths are overlapping perfectly now. Um, so what we want to do is we want to actually grab these nodes with the direct selection tool up here. So we're going to grab this node here, and then we're going to hold shift, and we're going to click once on this node. So you see how this one is in light blue and this one's light blue. Everything else is in white. We have just those two selected. So you can either click, hold, and drag and pull this out if you want, but I like to use my arrow keys just so it's nice and straight. And then you can just go all the way to the right until it matches up. Um, obviously, that's a little over. It's okay if it's a little bit over, but you want to get as close to uh, perfect as possible. So if you need to click and hold and drag it over, you can just like that. And there you go. You've adjusted one tab. Now, you're going to have to do this with every other tab. That's why boxes are the hardest. It takes forever. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's different ways that you can do this but just say for example you have this now I'm gonna rotate this um, by holding shift you can do it in um, 45 degree angles and then you can come up here and you can set it on this tab and you can do these two tabs here up and change them up there so that's pretty much how you can adjust those um, so let me go ahead and zoom now if you wanted to change the curve of this as well let's get, touch base on that really quick um, Let's say you have two tabs that are perfectly aligned here, like this and this. There you go. So let's say this is your other piece. Um, obviously, you would have a full nether side here. 
but let's say these these pieces match up perfectly you have what's called kerf kerf is where the laser will take uh, will cut along this line and right where it cuts here it's going to cut out an actual piece of the material leaving a little bit of a gap so if you have these perfectly lined up like this it's going to be loose it's just going to fall out of that tab without glue so if you don't want to use glue you're going to have to make um, either the this inside slot smaller or the outside or yeah or this um, main tab from this piece wider and let me show you this kerf setting here so basically you have your laser beam that comes down and it kind of does this like V shape kind of looks like a V um, and when it comes down it's basically leaving this little edge kind of like a V shape and then everything that's in the way of the the laser is the kerf that that uh, basically destroys the material in between it leaves that slight gap it's a very small gap but you do have to compensate for that um, so let me show you just uh, a real quick example of what this may look like too uh, I'm just gonna do a real quick I'm gonna use the same one that we did earlier and let me rotate this again so I'm just gonna show you a quick example here I'm not trying to take up any of your time but I wanted to be as detailed as possible so you, everybody knows this so this is your wood I just made it brown so you, so you know that it's wood and let's say your laser beam comes straight down what the, the laser beam is actually doing it's not doing a straight line completely it the beam itself comes down at kind of a V shape like like I was showing in that picture so the beam actually kind of goes like this in a way to focus down at the bottom of this wood so it can cut all the way through the wood kind of like a magnifying glass if you hold a magnifying glass out outside on the ground it kind of the beams have to to adjust to that point and that's that's what cuts the wood through and then all of this in the center here gets deleted um, so that center point would be right here so everything that's in that V shape for example like this would be deleted and you gotta make up that adjustment so let me get rid of all of this so we can clean it up a little bit here there we go so for example here um, you can actually go to your tab and right now it is 0.849 inches wide here um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to adjust that let's say to 8.6 and we have a, a curve of um, 0.11 inches that's what we adjusted there and as you can see it's slightly bigger you can kinda see where they're lapping over now I'll kinda zoom in here a little bit and I'll just make these lines smaller so you can kinda see it now so you see how they're kinda overlapping now that will make up the adjustment for that V shape that I was telling you about so that's pretty much it sorry I drug that out for a little bit there but I wanted to go as in-depth as possible here so I'm gonna delete this box here and we're gonna move on to slots slots are gonna be way easier than that uh, slots are super easy so as you can see here this is part of my um, Apple watch stand that I just did it's this thing I think right here yep yeah so this is the Apple watch stand this is gonna be the acrylic piece that holds the watch the back piece and this uh, bottom piece here I just took the, the top the front part out because we're not gonna use it in this example um, so for example here this tab right here I believe I made it um, if I'm not mistaken at 0 0.75 inches and then the slot is 0. 737 inches so uh, what that is that it keep, uh, equals a curve of um, 0 or 0 0.013 inches because um, you basically you add that to this and that gets the overall size that's how you determine that um, so that that's the curve settings that I use um, and then that will basically let this tab right here sink into this slot so as you can see you can see a little bit of blue there on both sides just barely 
that is basically because this tab is bigger than that slot and that will allow it to suck in with no glue. Obviously if I match this up, let's say I made this tab or this, this actual slot right here, if I made that 0 0.75 inches, now they're perfectly lined up and that tab will just fall into place and then the kerf will allow that to fall out. So you don't want to do that, otherwise you're going to have to add glue. But that's also how you adjust the slots. So for example, let's say that tab was too tight and you want to adjust this slot. Let's say that tab is just just too tight and then you can make this slot a little bit bigger. You could actually bump it up by 0 0.01 and then add that to your current value. So. We'll change that 5 to 6 here, and then that will make that slot even bigger, and you can see how you see that little tiny edge of red there over top whenever I had it clicked there. Um, that would make the slot looser, and then in this case you'll need glue, but you would you'd make that adjustment based on what you need. Um, and you can do the opposite way too, where like we did before, where you just make a rectangle like that. Um, we'll just turn it sideways so we can see Whoop. if I can grab the corner here. There we go. So, um, just for example, let me go ahead and go back down to the correct size here, 0 0.75. So this is how big I made my, my, uh, tabs on here. Um, but my material that it's going into is one eighth inch. As you can see, the blue is a quarter inch so if I wanted to use it for green glass acrylic that it was going into um, so let me pull this example back up so you see this this glass is going into this ha this eighth inch material that's why the tab is only eighth inch material back here or an eighth inch tab um, but let's say I wanted to use this glass and go into the same size uh, quarter inch glass you can actually use this um, this square that I made here and you can just line it up and make sure everything lines up correctly. Um, you can take your time and line it up. I'm not gonna do that, but this is pretty much all you need to do. Highlight your design and then merge them together just like that. And there you go, you have a larger tab to adjust your, your actual slot um, or your tab to go into the slot. So that's it, that is super easy. And then another thing that you have to watch out for why I'm using this example of the Apple Watch um, I could only uh, test this out with the Apple Watch that I had, which is the 38 millimeter Apple Watch. So, um, if you have a bigger one, the charger may be different. That's why I have that little disclaimer in there. So, if you do need to adjust it, when you put the actual Apple Watch charger in here, it's a tight fit and it kind of expands this opening. It expands that slot a little bit. That's why this this slot right here, this blue slot, is set on 0 0.8 instead of um, 0 0.737, I believe it was, that was down below. Because when this expands, that makes that slot bigger, or, or the actual um, tab on the acrylic piece here bigger. And you gotta you gotta watch out for that if you're gonna have something that expands a little bit. So let's, same example, let's say if you have the bigger Apple Watch and this expands even further past that 0.8 inches, um, you can actually come up to this slot here, increase the width up to like 0.9 or whatever, however much you want, you gotta play with it. And you see how it just made it bigger? So now it's even easier to fit in there. And if it expands whenever you put your Apple Watch in there, uh, you can make up that difference. Now, if you don't want it to expand, um, obviously, if you make this circle bigger, the Apple Watch charger may just fall through. So that's why I didn't make it bigger. I wanted it to be nice, tight, and kind of like a uh, clamp whenever you, you clamp it in there. But just as an example, if you wanted to, you could technically just grab a circle, lay it in there, make it as big as you need it to the right size. Um, let me see here. There we go. Let's just say like that, for example. 
and you can you can adjust it however you want to adjust it put it wherever you want to put it and then you can actually let's just say like right there you needed it wider you can highlight both of these go to Pathfinder and then remove the top and there you go you made the entire circle bigger inside there without having to worry about adjusting it deleting it rebuilding it so that's how you can adjust special things like that um, let me undo that so I can get my circle back here and um, for example with those acrylic tops um, that I did on these you see how these little circles here I've got all these circles and I put in there that it works for bottles that are like 1.33 inches let's say you have a bottle that's 1.34 inches just for an example um, let me go ahead and pull this up so uh, those circles are set at 1.33 inches like this there we go um, so this is how those circles are set so let's say your bottle is just slightly bigger all you got to do is come up here and change that to a, that three to a four and this three to a four and there you go you increased it just enough to squeeze your bottle in there make it a nice fit and I know what you're thinking well if I set it right on that thing won't it be tight no not really because you have that kerf that when this laser goes around it's gonna evaporate some of that material and it's usually perfect fit whenever you work with bottles and stuff like that um, so this this kerf that I was talking about this little V shape that kinda erases this that gives it enough room just enough gap for those to get in there perfectly um, so that's pretty much it one last thing about kerf is when it does this V shape um, and it's cutting down this V shape just like this in the material you can probably see it right here a little bit better um, if that material is too tight like for example if you use the rubber tip hammer like you have to on some of these um, if it's too tight one way don't just smash it on there you could possibly crack the glass go ahead and flip the whole unit over this whole top glass since it's um, since it's the same and centered on both sides and this is the same image what I like to do is I flip that entire thing over and then put it on there because that V shape will be upside down now that goes into those tabs and it allows it to be just slightly looser and glide on there a little bit easier that's something that I like to do and a real quick tip I wanted to share with you guys before finishing off this video so that's pretty much it you guys that is how you adjust tabs slots and then real quick adjustments on different things like circles you can do the same thing with squares that's pretty much it you guys I hope this um, this uh, this video helped you out I hope it was as easy as I think that I got to explain it here it's really not that hard it's just time-consuming and that's why um, when you ask people to do it 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 does take quite a bit of time to do so um, I would recommend learning out how to do this I hope this helped you guys out and we'll catch you guys next time <laughs>